Hi, I'm Seamless for ADSR today to show you how to integrate the Machine Micro Mark III with FL Studio 20. We're going to begin by using the Machine plugin. And while we're in with it in FL Studio, we're going to use this to send MIDI uh, from how it's controlled on, on the uh, machine into FL. That's going to happen by going into the settings tab here and there's the MIDI section. We're going to set the output port to something unique, something that's not already being triggered somewhere. Let's pick 14. 14 is cool. Um, I have some things set up ahead of time. The things to trigger, I'm just going to make it kind of a trappy beat thing. But what I want to talk about is what these pads represent in the software machine. There's a hierarchy of sound, group, and master. It's an important distinction because each of these pads are the sounds and they are individual universes. If I come in here into this guy and I set him to go out, which you do by clicking on the output options here and then selecting your various thing. Let's like say I want to come out here to the MIDI thing. I'm going to set him to say the host control and I'm going to set channel one. Now what that is doing is now when I hit this, it's going to send an output to the output port that I set. So when I was talking about before about the distinctions that I want to talk about is that I wanted to specifically to make this a separate thing than say to have one of these guys trigger like a multi sample instrument without where I use like a general MIDI um, and notes to play back because I also want I want to melodically trigger this kick. I'll show you what I mean. So to get this in FL, what we're going to do is we're going to use a patcher. This is the easiest way, in my opinion, from FL is going to be the notes input. And this is just to say whatever is triggering it out here in a sequencer will trigger this thing in here. But we don't want it to do that. We want MIDI port 14 to trigger it. So we're going to go to output events and then in here, pick MIDI port 14 and it will show up. And now when I come over here and link it, it does the thing. However, we want to be a channel specific thing because we, the port is just the one port. So we're going to use this, the VFX color mapper, which is basically a channel filter. Whatever input port comes in will have its channel split, and then you can route the channels to any other channels, and then it gets output the various ports that are here. One, two, three, four by default. So here's channel one from what we talked about before. And now I have it set up that I can actually record the uh, kick even melodically. I'm going to set the root note here. If you pick the note and then you turn the wheel, it lets you choose what your root note is. I have picked F3, F sharp three rather. And I'm also going to change the scale, which you can do by going over here into the bank of the scale types. And there's the main modes and jazz types and that thing. We're going to go into modes because I want to pick Phrygian. How fun is that? So let's lay down ourselves a pattern for that. Hmm? We're going to turn on recording within the machine, and when it does that, this lights up, and this is how long the pattern is that we're going to record it. I actually wanted this to be a two-bar long pattern. I have two bars of time selected in FL, and this is important because even if I had one time selected and I hit play, it will just loop the first bit of that bar. I want to actually go through both bars. So you have to have your time selection actually line up with what's happening in order to, uh, for it to completely loop the recording there. Once you've done that, I'm going to engage the metronome, and I'm just going to play a thing. How fun. Now, just to make sure it's on time, I'm going to hit hold down shift, hit quantize, and then boom. Sounds like a fun beat. Disable recording, disable the metronome. Actually, I'm going to leave the metronome on because we need that for later. So here's how we get this MIDI that's here into FL. We're going to go back to the sequencer as it's here. And machine has a drag and drop function, which is pretty great. I'm going to drag this button, that's what that is, and then drop it right onto the thing. And then there it is. Also using shift, I'm going to hit clear. And now I have a pattern. Sweet deal. So let's get some more drum elements involved, right? Because this is still just the one pad, remember? And then that's what the second guy here is for. I set up an FPC with some, actually, these are samples from the machine, which is kind of great because I'm using machines. To get this to match up in the FPC, it's really very easy inside the machine. So these are, these are hats and a rad and a clappy kind of snare deal. 
So what I want to do is I want to set that up to be channel two so that this guy could be channel one in its own universe. And then this dude will be channel two. Just for fun, I'm going to color it. So host channel two. Just to make things simple, I'm going to copy the sound parameters and paste it onto the other guys that are going to be that triggered there. And then this dude I'm also going to paste and I'm going to recolor him because he's going to be a different sound. Oh, great, that's fine. Now, to get this to match up in here, we're going to use the last hit function inside uh, FPC, which reads for the last note hit, and then we'll let you select that there to be the note that triggers it. So in machine to make this work, we're just going to make sure every one of these pads is a different note. It doesn't matter what note it is, it just matters that they're different. On top of that, we're going to go into the guy with the drums here, and like the original kick element, we're going to add the port 14 and the filter. Because remember, this is channel two. So I hit this button there, which is, is triggering the note. And then this selects the uh, page inside FPC. Go to the menu note, last hit. And then ta-da. I'd already done this for these three pads here. So now we have an ability to trigger stuff. How neat is that? So let's go back into machine and with the layer of pattern one here as our backdrop, we can use it to uh, trigger the rest inside here. With So now we're going to use quantizing to kind of make that work out a little better because that was kind of janky on my end because I'm not the most perfect of performers on these things. And that's something that we can do fairly easily. Because I did triplets though, we're going to have to change the grid, which we do over here. They have these 16th note, 32 and all that kind of stuff. And then also T, T stands for triplets. So 16th note triplets is what I want to snap to. As you can see, the grid actually kind of lines up a little better. And then once more, shift quantize. Let's see what that sounds like. Make a couple adjustments. I love that transition from triplets into regular time. It's a pretty swanky thing to do. Much like with the other guy, we're going to drag and drop the MIDI onto the thing. And then once we do this, because it's a multi-track uh, MIDI source thing with a bunch of pads, we have to pick the thing that is what we want. In this case, it's group A1, pattern one. The one that's named. And then there it is. Shift clear. How neat. So now I want to add in an um, extra melodic thing. So I could make a pad that kind of represents any individual thing for any individual thing in FL, but really what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this next pad the kind of the general thing. It could be triggering and will trigger more or less whatever I need to do at any given second. And that's going to be done by, much like we did these other guys, we're going to come up here to tell it to be host, and then output three. And of course, color it to something unique. Purple, why not? And then filter, channel filter, output port, 14, number three. And then now that's already triggered for that. And of course, I'm going to do what, it, what we're doing the other time. I'm going to re keep recording it and recording it from within here. And then when I go to put it into the melodic element, if I wanted to trigger something else, I'll just disable that uh, third channel filter thing there. Because then at that point, the notes will be triggering it from within the sequencer. Quantize, that probably put that high guy at the top. And 
and let the other guy drag and drop. See how easy that is? As long as we have the sequencer in a visible range. Yeah. Shift clear. And there you have it, a pretty easy integration of using machine with FL Studio. If you have any questions about this, please let us know. If you like this, please like, favorite, and subscribe to ADSR. And as usual, have a nice day.